Hi and welcome to According to Pete. Uh, last time I remember we were in my garage and we were talking about uh, the amplifier kit, my project, and today we're going to talk about op amps. Hopefully I do it better than I did transistors, but there's a lot of information and uh, you're probably going to hear a minimal amount of it from me. And by the time we're done, I'll tie it back into that amplifier project. Uh, and hopefully it'll make something like sense. So, let's jump right into it, shall we? So what is an op amp? Well, an op amp is a magical little, little thing. With a transistor, if you're using a transistor as an amplifier, um, you can either get voltage gain or current gain out of a single stage. If you want both, you gotta put two stages together. Uh, with an op amp, uh, that isn't the case. You can get voltage gain and current gain with one little dude. Power gain, it's magic. Also, when you're using transistors, you have to be sort of aware of your input impedances and your output impedances, and you have to make sure everything matches up. You really got to know what you're doing to do it right, otherwise you're going to jack stuff up. Um, but with an op amp, that largely goes away. So uh, with only a few passives to, to help support it, you can get this thing up and running, and uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. So op amps come in uh, a variety of shapes and sizes for example and i know you can't see this a sot 235 package which is itty bitty bitty is that too close i don't know <laughs> there it is um but you can get them that small uh in a single package right so there's a single op amp in that guy uh you can get them uh in quad packs or uh dual packs in either uh, a dip 8 dip 16 uh, or an ASOIC package. Some run at 5 volts, some run at 3.3 volts, some run at 30 volts or 35 volts or even higher. Some run with single supplies like 0 to X volts, some run um, with bipolar supplies, so you can have minus 15, plus 15, or, or you know, different numbers. There are some that run at crazy high frequencies uh, to do TV or, or, or RF stuff. Uh, some that have a huge amount of current gain, which is to say really low output impedance so they can drive speakers and stuff. Uh, and their packages are usually such that you can attach a, a big old heat sink onto them because they're going to dissipate a whole lot of heat. Uh, there are also some that we would consider garden variety. Uh, for example, the LM358 that we carry, uh, I would call that garden variety, and we use a lot of those around here. They're good for low frequency, they work um, with single supplies. The point is that they come in a lot of different packages, a lot of different configurations, uh, and I'm going to sort of kind of try to help you sort through it a little bit. So, let's talk about how an op amp actually works. V plus, we'll call that... The minus we'll call that, and that might actually be ground, uh, but in this case, you know, general terms and all that. We have two inputs. One is called the inverting input, one is called the non-inverting input. Um, so what does that mean? Well, uh, in general terms, what an op amp actually does is it amplifies the difference between these two pins, okay? And a lot, a lot of gain, okay? When you operate one of these things in what's called open loop mode, which is to say there's no feedback, um, the gain of this device by itself is like 100,000 or more, okay? So oftentimes you need to uh, put a feedback network in there, and we'll talk about that in a bit. What you need to know for now is that um, when the non-inverting input is higher, not taller, but <laughs> higher voltage, uh, higher voltage than the uh, inverting input, the output will tend to go higher. And when the uh, inverting input is higher than the non-inverting input, the output will tend to go lower. Now, like I said, the gain of this thing is, is super freaking high. So the result of that, of course, is that it takes almost no difference at all between these two pins for this thing to just go bouncing off the rails, either high or low, okay? Uh, something else you need to know here that, that is really cool, adds to the magic sauce of this thing, is that these inputs are very high impedance, okay? They don't draw a lot of current from what's out there, okay? Um, now, of course, when you design a practical circuit that has feedback and stuff, the input impedance is going to come down, and I'll show you how that happens. Um, but still, really, really cool. Uh, another thing that is really, really cool is the output impedance of the drive, like I said earlier, really, really low, okay? Um, in fact, uh, ideally, when you're designing circuits, a lot of times you just go, oh, pff, zero output impedance. Well, it isn't really, unless you're trying to drive something like a 2-ohm load or something crazy like that. But 
for you know design purposes uh, when you're just throwing something together you basically assume yeah this is gonna have a zero ohm output in P and it's gonna drive whatever I tell it to until you figure out otherwise uh, as I said before open loop um, when, you, when you're operating this thing in open loop you have basically what's called a comparator okay I'm gonna alter this just slightly to sort of illustrate what's going on here to compare what you would do is you would set up a reference voltage so you'd have like VCC up here, or V plus if you want to call it that. Resistor going to here, and then another resistor to ground, okay? Now ideally, um, th this, this could be anywhere you want, right? You want to know, I want to know when my input voltage right here goes above a certain threshold. So you would set the ratio of these two resistors to be right here. Now remember, the gain of this thing, open loop, really, really high. Because of that reason, or because of that, um, these these two inputs, you know, in a comparator mode, they are going to be different. Um, we're going to talk about virtual ground in a bit, so I don't want to say anything stupid just yet. Um, but what you do, basically, is uh, you set your reference voltage here, and you take your input here. And if this voltage goes higher, like I said before, then this thing is going to go all the way to ground, right? Because I got ground there. Uh, if this thing goes lower, then it goes all the way to V+. Okay, handy little thing if you want to drive like uh, an LED or, or uh, you know, switch something else, switch a signal. Um, but it is 180 degrees out of phase, so that's something you got to keep in mind. Now, comparators are not really what we're talking about here today, but um, it is good to know that uh, you can use an op amp as a comparator in a pinch. However, there are things called comparators that are optimized for that. So, may not be the best choice to do this, but you can if you have to. For amplifying something like uh, an audio signal, um, you, you can't obviously use this. This has got huge gain. You need to tame that gain somehow. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a feedback network. Uh, and I'm going to show you two examples of things that I would normally use around here. So the first thing I want to show you is what's called a buffer. So for example, you've got your non-inverting input here, you've got your inverting input there, and you've got your output there. And then you do this kind of action. Da -da -da. And then you have like your V plus and we'll assume ground here, okay? Now, um, this is a non-inverting circuit, I can tell you that. Uh, also, the output looks just like the input, okay? Like, there's no gain. Zero gain. Why would you want to use this thing? Well, uh, uh, like the name implies, it's a buffer, all right? What it's meant to do is to isolate whatever's over there from whatever's over here, right? So where would you use that? Well, for example, um, you might use it between uh, a sensor that has a very high output impedance, um, uh, so you would attach it, attach the sensor to the input, and then probably send this guy to an ADC line. Okay, so all you're doing is really adding a little bit of current gain. You want you want to be able to push the signal. You don't know what's going to be out here necessarily, so you want to be able to source enough current, but you're not going to have to worry about it. So that's what this does. Uh, the next example is what's called an inverting amplifier, and it's got a more complicated feedback network than that. So here's my inverting uh, amplifier. Uh, I got all my formulas written down so I don't mess this up, but I probably will anyway. This is our signal in. I'll start there. Um, so we assume, uh, well, we assume there's going to be some signal there. Uh, I got a plus V. I got ground. We can assume it's 5 volts or something like that. To get this thing to work, right, if you've got plus voltage and you've got ground, the output reasonably has to be somewhere between 0 and VCC, right? Okay. So what you do, what you do is you set up the reference on the non-inverting input, okay? And what I have here, I got a 10K here, I got a 10K here. Um, and what this will do, right, if this is five volts, I'm gonna have two and a half volts right here. So normally you will see two and a half volts sitting out here in its quiescent state, okay? Um, now, without getting into really, really crazy circuit analysis, because I don't remember it, uh, the gain of this op amp is going to be R2 over R1. So I'll write that down here. Uh, AV, which is voltage gain, equals R2 over R1, which in this case, 100K over 10K is a gain of 10. Simple, nothing to it, right? 
manufacturers of op amps, what they do is they will internally roll off the high frequency response of an op amp so it doesn't go into oscillation, right? If the gain just went up ultimately in, to infinity, what happens is that um, it takes, there, there's a propagation delay between input and output, okay? So at some frequency, this is going to turn from negative feedback, which, right, this is negative feedback. I'm feeding this signal back into here. It'll turn from negative feedback to positive feedback. Not good. That causes oscillation. Normally, like I say, they'll roll it off internally, but don't count on it. So what I always do is I'll add a cap. Dun, 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 dun. And I will just calculate the, the highest frequency of interest, right? And I will set that value right there. So uh, we'll say the value of that cap, I'm going to call it C1, just because I haven't labeled a C yet, uh, equals 1 over 2 pi F, uh, not C, <laughs> R, R, where that is the R of interest. Okay, so for example, uh, I did a little example beforehand, and if my frequency of interest is um, 20 kilohertz, uh, and this is 100K, this value comes out to be around 80 picofarad. Okay, so the 3 dB point, the roll-off point for 20 kilohertz, uh, is going to put that cap at that value. Um, now, I did just about this exact same circuit in the amplifier kit that we were talking about last time, and I actually chose 10 picofarad, because I like my highs, right? Yeah, there you go. Um, now something else, right, this, this is a good thing to have, prevents oscillation. Something else is this reference voltage, okay? That'll work, but if any noise appears on this, it's gonna, you know, <laughs> go right out the back. So what you want to do is you want to put one here too. It stabilizes your reference voltage. Um, now I usually, uh, for a 10K, if you do something like, if, if you want it to be 10 hertz, uh, and this is low frequency uh, roll off we're talking about, uh, so um, if, you want, if, you, if you want this to be down around 10 hertz, the value is like 1.59, I know you can't see this, I'm just doing it for effect. Uh, 1.59 microfarad. This doesn't have to be a high voltage cap, right? So you can put a 10 microfarad there and forget it. Nothing to it. Here's, here's a concept that um, people either get or they don't. This point right here, and, and in fact this point, remember I said that the gain, the open loop gain is really high, right? In this configuration, these two pins, these two inputs, are going to be just about completely exactly the same. If you put a scope on these. Uh, in, in fact, if you're running a signal in here, you're not even going to see anything there. You won't. And, and, and you'll go, why isn't my op amp working? Well, I don't see anything there. Well, you're not going to. And the reason is because this is called virtual ground, okay? For an AC signal, the non-inverting input has a cap on it, right? And so what's that? That's an AC short. So because these two pins are, are internally held very, very close together, um, this point is going to be considered virtual ground. Not real ground, but consider it ground as far as this AC signal is concerned. If you put a scope there, if you have like a sine wave out here, right, and you go and you, you see your sine wave here and you don't see it here, do not immediately conclude that all oh, that resistor's fried. No, 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 you're not gonna see it. And the virtual ground principle is exactly why, okay? Now the other thing I want to tell you about this is that, of course, we're running plus 5 volts, or plus V, and ground, okay? So, your input signal either is going to have to have a DC offset to create, you know, a, quiet, a linear region for this to work in, or you're going to have to AC couple it. you got to put a cap in there, okay? And this cap should be, uh, generally, um, I like my low frequency response, so I make that cap as big as I can. But you can actually calculate it um, using this uh, 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 <laughs> formula, that's what it's called. So what you want is you want to calculate this thing for low frequency response against this 10K resistor, right? With that 10K resistor there, if you go with like 10 microfarad, 
um, all of your audio frequencies of interest, if that's what you're doing, uh, are all going to drop on that 10K and not that capacitor. If the capacitor is too small, what's going to happen is that at a certain frequency, the cap is going to start coming into the gain equation. It's not just going to be R2 over R1, it's going to be R2 over R1 plus whatever capacitive reactants that device is creating. So you want a big value there to pass all your frequencies. Okay? Um, secondly, of course, your output is going to have a DC offset. It's sitting at a quiescent value of two and a half volts. If you don't want that, you gotta put a cap out there too. What value does that have to be? Well, that depends on what you're driving, okay? Uh, in the case of the STA540 that this circuit almost verbatim exists um, before on that kit, uh, the input of the, to the STA540 is quite large, so I can make that a pretty small cap and not have to worry about any of the frequency response. Um, just in case you're curious, the difference between this circuit and the input section to the uh, STA540 amplifier kit, uh, this resistor is actually 47K, so it's bigger. One other thing, we talked about input impedance of these two pins, right? And I said, okay, when you add a feedback loop, that's going to change. Yes, it does. Um, in fact, this is, this is what's happening. Because of the virtual ground thing here, and this is virtual ground, the input impedance of this circuit actually becomes the value of R1. Okay, now they're, they're like bigger and more impressive equations to actually figure it out, but for all practical purposes, your input impedance is 10K, okay? Um, not the worst, not the best. You can make it more. You can arrange your circuit to change that if you need to, but 10K is not too bad. Lastly, in reference to the amplifier kit that I always keep going back to with regard to this, um, if you look at the schematic for that guy, you will notice that... Um, I have a volume control in there, right? I have a level control. Now, what you may be tempted to do is to adjust volume by adjusting the gain of the op amp. Don't do that. And the reason is because you affect, um, <laughs> well, first of all, affecting the gain isn't necessarily the best thing because op amps can become unstable at a gain of one. In fact, they it, it, it follows from that that if you go less than one, which is approaching zero volume, they become really unstable. So you don't want to do that. Um, also, you have to choose, like, oh, which one of these am I going to do? Well, no matter what you do, you're going to jack with the frequency response of the amplifier. So in the kit, what I did, um, if we assume this isn't here, what I did is I just have my signal coming in from here, and I got a pot here. And that's my wiper okay so in this way I'm not it's it, this might come into play a little bit here but for the most part it does not okay and it doesn't affect the frequency response of the amplifier and I can turn it all the way to zero and this doesn't go unstable okay so you might see that in the schematic so to wrap up here with regard to op amps uh, if you're choosing an op amp for your own project things you're gonna be want to be looking for in a data sheet uh, bandwidth Okay, make sure that the part has enough bandwidth to do what you're looking for. If you've got some project that's crazy high frequency, you're going to want to do that. Um, if you've got something that requires more than about 160 milliamps of output drive, uh, you know, you're going to want to check that spec as well. Um, power supplies, does it uh, require a bipolar supply? Can it run with one supply? You're going to want to look at those things, so watch those in the data sheets. Now what we did here today, was um, exactly two configurations of an op amp. There are lots. You can do lots of things with these things. Um, and uh, if you check the data sheet, if you just want to poke around with an op amp, uh, the LM358s are really cool. They only go up to one megahertz, but honestly, eh, for a lot of the projects we do around here, that's perfectly sufficient. Um, but if you want to poke around with them, check them out. Uh, you'll find in the data sheet for that guy, there's a bunch of examples of different configurations that you can set up for an op amp. Um, so try them out. Don't hurt yourself, you know, but, you know, check them out. Till next time, send your questions to uh, feedback at sparkfun.com, according to Pete in the subject line, and we'll get them, we'll put them in the queue, and uh, that's it. I'll see you next time.